Hello, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. I have just recovered from a cold. I probably still have remnants in my throat. That's what he said. So if I sound a bit off in this video, it's because of that, nothing else, no other reasons. In this video, I will be doing another unhaul. I haven't done an unhaul since May, I believe. And in that video, I was wearing a full on, like kind of tracksuit thing. So let's let's do a little bit of an outfit check today. Um, this is my loungewear sort of tracksuit. I mean, it looks good if you ask me, although I do have major camel toe. So yeah, that's the outfit check. Usually with my unhaul videos, I don't plan what I'm going to unhaul until that actual video. So you're going to probably see me running around a lot. So I wanted to show you what I was wearing full on without any surprises. You know, I just don't want to give you any heart attacks when you say this ass. Running around the library trying to find a book to unhaul. Usually with my unhaul videos as well, I have a little bit of a challenge, like a little bit of a twist to make it a little bit more fun. So for this unhaul video, for every pumpkin spice latte I had this year, I have to unhaul a book. Now this idea was inspired by my sexy gorgeous friend Jess. And this has been in the works since August. It's been a couple of months coming. It was during a Patreon live show. And I believe maybe in the same live show, I asked my patrons to predict how many pumpkin spice lattes I will have. Therefore, how many books will I have to unhaul? So the grand number, the grand total of books that I have to unhaul, because this is how many pumpkin spice lattes I had this year, which includes iced pumpkin spice lattes, frappuccinos, anything pumpkin spice flavored from Starbucks. <laughs> I think I only ever had pumpkin spice lattes from Starbucks this year. I, I never had a pumpkin spice latte from anywhere else. How many of those combined did I have to give me an unhaul total? The number of books I'm unhauling in this video because this is how many pumpkin spice lattes I had this year was 74. <laughs> Uh, no. 76! <laughs> Sorry, I got it wrong. It's 76. I really remember that moment, didn't I? 76 pumpkin spice lattes I had this year. Now, I could have had more. Honestly, I was holding myself back. There were times when I would travel to places that didn't have pumpkin spice lattes, like Whitby, Chillingham Castle, the cottage getaway where I went with my friends. You know, they were places where I couldn't actually buy a pumpkin spice latte. And there was a little bit of a dry spell in the middle of October as well, where I got a little bit sick of them. So I went about a week without having a pumpkin spice latte or something like that. So I probably could have reached 100. If I really tried, I could have reached 100. So let's start with the unhaul, otherwise this will be an extremely long video. Now, as I mentioned, I do usually wait until the actual video before I start pulling things from shelves to unhaul. There have been some books that I put aside to unhaul the past few months, mainly because either I got duplicates or things like that. So I'm gonna get those out of the way and then we're gonna get into the fun stuff of me running around like a headless chicken trying to find books to unhaul. So the first three books I'm gonna unhaul, and don't worry, it's not because I don't like them, it's because I do have some special editions of them. But that is The Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee. I have the three books in paperback, but I do have the Illumicrate set. I did manage to get the Illumicrate set so that I don't have to keep hold of the paperbacks. I'm also gonna unhold The Midnight Hour by Benjamin Reed and Laura Trinder. This was a very old Alcrate Jr. book that I got, and I just, the longer it's gone, the less interested I am reading it. And I'm finding it hard to read a lot of middle grade where the plot just sounds like the plot of 15 other middle grade books that I own. And this one sounds like 15 other middle grade books that I own. So this one is definitely low on my priority list to read. So it's getting axed. I'm also Unhauling Ghost Squad by Clarabel A. Ortega. I read this one a couple of years ago, but I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I, I gave it three stars, which isn't too bad, but I found a lot of the description was reliant on established properties. And I thought it relied too much on like using the aesthetics of like say Beetlejuice or things like that, rather than carving its own kind of story or its own kind of world. The last book that I put aside actually is Hyde by Kirsten White. I tried this. I really, really did. But, oh my gosh, I just couldn't get past the dialogue. I don't even know how far I got in, but it was probably like the first 50 pages. And I just thought it wasn't very well written. I loved the idea of it. I loved the premise of it. But I just couldn't get past the shoddy dialogue, you know? So, yeah, wasn't wasn't a fan. I know a lot of people aren't. And there are some people who do like it. And to you guys, I think, well, <laughs> I'm kidding. But yeah, that's six. And those are the only six that I had put aside. It was mainly because I needed room on the shelf. So I just like, oh, I'm going to unhaul that later. So I'll take that out. And I'll have room to put a book in now, you know? So it was mainly because of that. So now getting into other books. So I'm trying to think of books that I've read recently that I wasn't the biggest fan of. And there are instantly 
two books that come to mind. They're books that I recently read for vlogs in October. One of them is Jaws by Peter Benchley. This one had so much promise, but there was some really shockingly awful things in this book. There was like this storyline that I really, really hated. And if it had to just focus on the shock, it would have been fantastic, but it didn't. It wanted to go a more dramatic route with other characters, and I just didn't like that. And the racism was so unnecessary, I hate that. And then also Whisper by Chang Yuko. I was so excited for this one, but I just couldn't get past how diabolically awful the main character is. And when it's something like this, where you have to root for the main character to survive, because this is a horror, then it kind of undercuts everything because I didn't want the main character to survive. We're supposed to feel sympathy for him and we're supposed to root for him, but I couldn't because he was an abuser and he was awful. So I just couldn't get very far into this but I had such high hopes. It was just so disappointing. Now this is where I might get a little bit tricky. I'm trying to remember what else I read recently that I didn't like. Uh, oh yeah, another one. Legally Blonde by Amanda Brown. <laughs> if you love the Legally Blonde movie, do not read this. This takes all of the, you know, color and pizzazz of the movie and it just makes it a really great and bland story. It was so disappointing. I love the movie so much, but honestly avoid this like the plague if you want to give it a read, just don't. Next, I'm gonna unhaul The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. This was sent to me as part of Book of the Month uh, when they sponsored me that one time. And it has a summary that's like this long, and then it goes on to the back. And if a book requires a summary that large, I do not want to read it. It doesn't sound like something I would gravitate towards reading anyway. So I think the best thing to do is to just cut it out my life, you know, cut it out my life. The pumpkin spice latte I had for this book was incredible. Okay, that's the first time, just 64 more to go. Oh no, 66. Ugh, I need to remember, 76, not 74. Okay, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I wasn't a huge fan of this when I read it. It was... It started off quite well. I thought the writing was so good. I just got a little bit self-masturbatory for my liking and I have a whole video talking about it. But yeah, Taylor Jenkins Reid and me have not been getting along very well in recent times. Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. I read this. It must have been last year because it was long listed last year. It was fine. I liked it. It just wasn't really my style. And while it had some really great messages and, and morals and things, it just isn't something I'm going to ever reread. And I think there was a large part of this that I felt dragged quite a bit. But that's fine, I just think this isn't my kind of genre. So as much as I keep trying to read in different genres, sometimes they just do not agree with me. Detransition Baby is one of them. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna unhold the Red Gloves and Other Stories by Catherine Fisher. I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of peer pressured <laughs> into getting this book. Have you ever been into a store or you went to a stand? You, you just feel like you have to get it because the person who worked there recommended it and you'd feel bad for not getting it. Even though I just, I wasn't ever really interested. I'm not the biggest fan of short story collections. I mean, I would give them a try, but this one just didn't appeal to me, but I was just like, oh yeah, it sounds fantastic. I'll get it, I'll get it. Just to be a people pleaser, because that's the kind of person I am. So I have no interest in reading this. I just bought it because I didn't want to offend the person who recommended it. So if you're watching, I'm so sorry. I don't think you are. I totally get it though, as an ex bookseller, you do have to like recommend and, and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I was just a little bit pressured, not gonna lie. Thank you so much, Steph, for gifting me this for the Clitorature Book Club. I read it for the Clitorature Book Club and I didn't love it. I gave it the good old college try. I didn't even find it that entertaining, in all honesty. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the live show of that because a lot of my thoughts on this I've repressed, but I just remember reading this and thinking, I don't really understand why people love it. And I was holding out hope because people said, oh, the first book's not that great, but then it gets better after that. I did not see proof of that. So unless there's a conspiracy going on, I just don't understand the hype on this one. Right, I'm gonna unhold The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. I read this three years ago now, I think, and I liked it, but I think I've been holding on to it thinking, I have every intention of getting to the rest of the series, but if I unhold this, then I won't have to go to the rest of the series, you know what I mean? I am somewhat interested, but not 100% interested in continuing. I would have to reread this to read the next ones. But if I get rid of this, then that's a series that I don't have to worry about trying to catch up on because I already have too many series to worry about catching up on. So if I take this out of the equation, 
then I never have to continue the series. And you know what? This has given me so much relief, so much stress relief. So yeah, I think City of Brass, I don't know if that's controversial or not. I mean, it was good from what I remember, but it didn't instantly capture my attention enough to get the sequel straight away. And it's been three years, so should probably cut my losses. Another anthology series is Trolls Eye View, A Book of Villainous Tales. And again, I probably would have given this a chance was I more into short stories? And it does seem pretty good because there are some like fairy tales that are a little bit twisted and told from the perspective of the villains, I believe. And it does have stories by Neil Gaiman, Holly Black, Garth Nix, and some other authors, I, I don't know who they are. But let's be realistic, I'm never gonna read this. Never gonna read it, never gonna read it. Nah. Did I sing this in the last Unhole video? It should be the anthem for the Unhole videos. Never gonna read it, never gonna read it. Never gonna read it, never gonna read it. Wah, wah, wah. Well, for this next one, I'm never gonna reread it, never gonna. That doesn't really go very well. Well, that's Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. I read this a year and a half ago and I liked it. I personally liked the steaminess, I liked the taboo aspect of the romance. It isn't incredible, but I had a fun time reading it. I did. But I don't know if that's because I made it fun or if it was the book that was fun. I think it was me. I think I was the fun one in this equation. Another one that I felt a little bit peer pressure to buy. Honestly, I feel like a lot of these books in this unhaul are gonna be ones that now that I don't work at Waterstones, I can be honest. <laughs> but that's Greenwich Park by Catherine Faulkner. I mean, I've heard nothing good about this book, honestly, and I'm not trying to base my decision on other people's opinions, but this was a thriller book of the month for Waterstones, and I wanted to try and read it so that I could genuinely recommend it, but I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't get into it and I couldn't in good conscience recommend it. So I do have a copy of it that I was hoping that I might try and read all of it at one point but then I'm like you know what I'm not gonna try. I'm not even gonna bother anymore. So yeah I'm just gonna get rid of it. Never gonna read it, never gonna read it, never gonna read it, never gonna read it. Cam Slaughter, I read this in the cabin and I liked half of it and then I was just like this isn't as amazing as I wanted it to be. I would like to try more from this author, but for this story in itself, and there is a character in here with my name, which doesn't often happen. Not that I really liked him all that much, but I wanna get rid. I just feel like anybody could have written this one. It was that kind of story. Very copy and paste from a generic kind of slasher film, I would probably say. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I read this a couple of months back, and while I thought it was pretty good, now gonna reread it. But I can see why a lot of people do end up loving it. So yeah, it's not bad by any means. I'm gonna unhaul The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I've had this for a while, but I don't have the first two. From Blood Nash, I think the series is called. And it was popular at one point. A lot of people were talking about it. In fact, it felt like everyone was talking about it. And I only ever got the third book. I never went ahead and got the first two. And honestly, I don't know why. And I, I think it might just be me self-sabotaging me reading that series. It was like, Gavin, don't buy them because then you don't have to read them. But then why did I even go for the third book? I can't remember. I don't know why. And it's just weird seeing it on the shelf by itself, knowing that that's the third book and the first two are nowhere to be found. So I'm going to get rid of it and then just take that series off my one to read list. Like, I need the space on these shelves. I did buy 100 volumes of One Piece. I need the room. I want to unhaul Lullaby by Leela Slamani. I can't remember if I tried to unhaul this in a past unhaul video. I don't think I did. But for some reason I feel like I've already talked about this book at some point. Can't remember why. I'm unhauling this because I associate it with a friend I'm no longer friends with. So, I mean, as petty as that sounds, like this could be a fantastic story. But every time I look at it, I re remember that friend I'm no longer friends with and it puts me off. We're just gonna put it down and that's all we're gonna see on the matter. But do you guys have books that you associate with certain people, whether they gifted it to you or you've got the recommendation from them and they're the people who you always associate that book with. So when you fall out with them, it's like you see that book and it reminds you of them. Does that ever happen to you? Let me know. Oh, uh, here's another one that I read and didn't really enjoy all that much. It is Mordu by Alex Phoebe. And I had no idea, <laughs> or at least I forgot, blocked it from memory. But the author was actually a lecturer in my uni and I totally forgot about that. I really enjoyed the ending of this. I love the atmosphere of this. I think this is quite a unique and imaginative world, but my God, is this a slog. This is such a slog to get through. This at the back, this is all glossary. The actual book is 512 pages, which isn't bad, but when 
a whole lot of nothing happens for most of it. It feels like a thousand and twelve pages. But I did really like the ending. It did make me interested in reading the second book. But again, I'm just like, do I really 100% want to read the sequel? Part of me is like, no. So we're just going to leave it. I went to Unhold Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Marino Garcia. This book has been on my shelves for so long. I have tried to read it a couple of times. I love Sylvia Marino Garcia's writing. I love Mexican Gothic, for instance. But I don't know why I don't really like this one when I try it every single time. I don't know if it's because it's YA fantasy and YA fantasy is very hit or miss for me. But I tried to read it. I think it was two and a half years ago or something like that, maybe back in 2019. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And I've kept hold of it this long to see if maybe one day I could do it. I can't. Never gonna read it, never gonna read it. Oh, get this out of my library. The Maidens by Alex Megalides. Oh, God, I hated this book so much. This is one of the books where, uh, this probably sounds like really awful, but if somebody gave this a really good rating, like say if someone gave this five stars, I would question their book taste. I genuinely would. This in Den of Vipers. If somebody gave either of those books five stars, I would be like, I would side eye. Honestly, I would side eye. I would just, I don't think I would trust another recommendation from that person. I'm not gonna lie. That probably sounds awful, but that's how much I hated this book. <laughs> I really did not like this book. Get this out. This was another Waterstones thriller book of the month. That's all I'm saying. So the next two books I'm unhauling, I'm only unhauling because I have pre-ordered the Fairy Loot Special Editions, which I think are gonna be shipping early next year. And that's Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. I genuinely do wanna read these books and I've been wanting to read them for so long. I, you know what, actually, I was waiting for Scallywagathon to come back so that I could read these books. Genuinely, I was waiting for the opportune moment to read piratey books and Scallywagathon hasn't happened in a while. So I haven't read them. And then the special editions were announced by Fairy Loot and I thought they looked absolutely gorgeous. And so I don't need these paperback copies. So these are unfortunately getting on hold. And if you're wondering what I'm gonna be doing with these books, I'm gonna keep hold of them for a little while because some of them I might need for end of the year book content. And then other ones I'm just gonna to give to charity shops. And any middle grades I unhold, I will donate to my niece and nephew's school library. So yeah, that's where they're going. I'm not selling anything. I can't be bothered with selling anything. And a lot of people do ask me to sell them the books, but that would just take too much effort, too much time. And I just can't do it, I'm sorry. I actually got this sent to me from a publisher. This is another Trisha Levenseller book, Blade of Secrets. And at the time when they sent me it, I was like, oh, this sounds quite interesting. I didn't ask for it, but I was like, oh, this sounds quite interesting. But then I just couldn't. I couldn't get into it. Again, this is YA fantasy. At least I believe it's YA. It read like YA. So I think it is YA fantasy. And I, oh my gosh, I don't know what it is. I'm trying to pinpoint what it is about a lot of YA fantasy. Not all YA fantasy though. For example, I love Twin Crowns, but like this, it just, it felt so, again, copy and paste generic. I felt like I'd read it before and I didn't want to give that much time and attention to a book that I thought would just be like any other book, you know? Like I'm trying to find books that I feel are unique to me and have something different to say. And this just didn't have it, from what I read anyway. I was gonna say, when you're at 40, no, we're not. When you're at 30, geez. How did I miss this one? When I mentioned, oh, there are some books I read recently that I didn't like, The Witches of Eastwick by John Updike. Yeah, stick to the movie with this one as well. It was so bad. It's written by a man, and the way he writes women is just so questionable. It made me uncomfortable a lot of the times. It didn't have the magic or the charm as the movie. Stick to the movie, please. Share Michelle Pfeiffer and Susan Sarandon. Make the characters likeable. That's all I'm gonna say. There's not a single character you wanna root for in this book. I mean, that's mainly my YA and adult shelves, but I do have a couple of shelves full of arcs that I do wanna get rid of that I've had for such a long time. But I might save that till the end because it's hard and it's tricky to get rid of arcs because you're not allowed to sell them, which I wouldn't want to. And giving them to charity shops can still be frowned upon. I just don't know what to do with them. What, do I put them in the recycling bin? Like, what do I do with the arcs that I've had for a while and don't want to keep? So I'm gonna save that to last. I'm gonna see if I can get to the 76 on the middle grade side of things. And if we do, I'm just gonna leave the arcs for now. But if we don't, we're gonna have to. 
I don't think there's any graphic novels or manga that I want to get rid of. Can you imagine? Let's get rid of all of One Piece. <laughs> right, middle grade. Let's go down the middle grade aisle and see what I can get rid of. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so hard. Oh, and you know what? I'm just gonna grab a whole bunch, I think, because walking all the way down along here, I, it doesn't sound like much, but to me right now it is. So I'm just gonna grab a bunch and we're gonna take it from there. Firstly, I have Noah's Gold by Frank Cottrell Boyce. Again, this was a Waterstones Children's Book of the Month and I picked it up out of obligation rather than genuinely being interested in reading it. Now it is told all in letters pretty much and I found that letter formats for stories are really hit and miss with me and I, I just didn't really like it all that much in this. You can blame Turn of the Key for that. And so yeah, this is going. Another one I'm getting rid of is Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab. This was an Alcrate Jr. book. I have all of the Cassidy Blake books in paperback and they all match their UK editions. Whereas this one came in an Alcrate Jr. box. I don't have the first two American editions. So there's no really point having this one. As much as I love the covers of the American editions and it's signed, I'm just like, is that enough to keep it on my shelves? Absolutely not. And Bridge of Souls was a good book, but it didn't blow me away, you know? The next one I went on hold is A Wolf for a Spell by Cara Sutton. I read this one for Middle Grade Monthly about a year and a half ago, maybe nearly two years ago. And I didn't find it very memorable. I didn't love, love, love it. I love the idea of Baba Yaga and stuff like that. I love Baba Yaga stories and retellings, but I just didn't find this one as unique as I wanted it to be. And I would never try to read it again, should I ever think, oh, I'm gonna give this another chance. I don't think I will. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna get rid of The Collector by K.R. Alexander. I had never tried this author before and they usually write middle grade horror. So I tried this book for believe -a -thon last year. Well, tried, I read it, I read it all for believe -a -thon last year and it was good but I was so underwhelmed by the horror elements of it and horror aspects of it. And I know we're gonna say, oh, this is a children's horror. This is middle grade horror. Obviously it's not gonna hit the same as an adult horror. Of course, I know this. There are some fantastic middle grade horrors that I love and ones that I'm genuinely terrified by, like Hide and Seeker by Taker Herman. But I just didn't find this, even if I was a child, I don't think I would have found it that scary. So yeah, I'm gonna give this one up. I'm gonna get rid of Eddie Albert and the Amazing Animal Gang by Paul O'Grady. I was sent this from the publisher along with a postcard from Paul O'Grady himself. Yes, the Paul O'Grady. Love him. Even like address to me, dear Gavin, blah, blah, blah. All the best, Paul O'Grady. You know, like it's amazing. It's incredible. So I'm going to keep this. I will definitely keep this. But the book, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in reading. <laughs> Obviously, I'm a little bit wary about celebrities deciding to write children's stories. Some of them have not gone very well in my opinion. And some of them have gone fantastically well. Like say Tamsin Merchant, I absolutely adore the map makers and the hat makers. I think they're so fantastic, but I'm just not interested in a contemporary story about a guy with animals as a gang. I think that's what this is about. <laughs> you know, I'm just not interested in that. If it was fantasy, it might have been different, but I'm just not interested in the plot. I'm gonna unhaul Victoria Hislop's Maria's Island. I believe this was an adult story, but she's readapted it for children. And it looks beautiful, don't get me wrong, it looks absolutely beautiful. But I've had it for a while now, and I just have no interest or desire to actually read it. And I've held on to it because I thought, oh, maybe one day I will. It's been like a year or something. I'm not gonna get to it. I've got two more Alcrate Jr. books here. Time of Green Magic by Hilary McKay. <laughs> what can I say? Like, I see it on my shelves every time and my eyes just automatically just skip past it. It just skips past it. Like, thank you so much Alcrate Jr. for including this in a book because I do love the cover. But it does sound quite generic. It does sound like a run-of-the-mill fantasy. And yeah, as I said, my eyes just glaze over when I see it on the bookshelf, so. I just want to make sure that the spines I have on my bookshelves are spines that I want to keep there, you know? So this is going along with the Star Spun Web by Sinead O'Hart. The only reason I'm getting rid of this is because I own the UK paperback of it and I'm not going to get any of the other American Sinead O'Hart books. So there's no point keeping this because I have it in paperback. So yeah, that's the only reason I'm getting rid of that, not because I don't like it. Okay, now we're nearly at 40. I'm currently using the sun as my lighting, so if the lighting goes up and down and all over the place, that's why. Another book that I have like some kind of negative associations with as well as The Whispers by Greg Howard. This was gifted to me by a booktuber who shall not be named from a good few years back now. And every time I see this book, I'm just reminded about it. And 
I just, I don't really feel interested in reading it anymore. It's not something that I feel like will be one of my all time favorites. So this one is going. What I think that might be a bit too young for me is Malice in Wonderland by Jenny Jennings. It does look cool, but it's not my age range specifically. I love middle grade, but I feel like this is a little under middle grade, you know? So I really have no interest in reading this anymore. I think this was sent to me w with a whole bunch of other books from a publisher and it was just like a, a box of goodies essentially, which honestly I do appreciate so much, but it's just not my age range essentially. Now I read Dragon Pill by Yoon Ha Lee years ago. I think it was back in 2020 and I liked it. I did like it, but I remember thinking the first half was better than the second half and I then had no interest in picking up any other book in the series. I think this is the first book in a series. And I do like the Rick Ryden Presents books, but I just, I feel like I got quite bored by the middle and then by the end I was just like, I need this to be over with now. So unfortunately it is going. The next two are the International Yeti Collective and the sequel, Shadow Spring. So I read this for Polathon back in 2020 and it was all right. It wasn't great, it didn't blow me away, but it was all right. And I picked up the sequel thinking, maybe I might enjoy it more, but I just have no interest in reading the sequel anymore. You know, when a first book in a series doesn't instantly capture your attention, or it was just okay, then what's the point in continuing, you know? So that's why I'm kind of unholing both these books together. I just think some kids will enjoy this a lot more than I will. What I did like when I read it, I even gave it its own spread edges, was The Hungry Ghost by H.S. Norrip. So yeah, I gave it yellow spread edges myself and I did like it when I read it. But unfortunately, I can't really remember anything about it since. And it just hasn't stuck with me. I see it on my shelf and I think something else could be in that place that would fit there that I haven't read yet and I'm excited to read. So yeah, I'm not keeping it. I'm gonna get rid of The Wrong Train by Jeremy D. Quit. I can't even remember how I got this. I don't even know where to put it. I've never heard anyone say anything or do anything with this. It's one of those books that, you know, like when you see it on your shelf, you're just like, why? Why is that there? <laughs> um, so that's what this book is. I just, I, I've no idea what to do with it. So I'm just gonna unhaul it. I'm unhauling Night Books by J.A. White. You're probably wondering, but Gavin, you love that book and you love that Netflix film. Of course I do. So the sequel's just come out, Grave Books, which is only out in hardback and I had to import it. So I, I, so this is where my consumerism comes out. I did rebuy this, but as a hardback. So now I have the first and second book as hardbacks because I didn't want to wait for the sequel to come out in paperback for it to match my copy of the book. And also I hate stickers like this. I can't get it off. It says Netflix and Netflix film. Why do you have to have Netflix twice in the sticker? I don't get it. So I hate that. I think it ruins the cover. You have this amazing keyhole cover and then this big white circle on the cut it just ruins it ruins it completely so i got the hardback of this one to replace it because <laughs> fuck stickers i think it's just arcs now that i need to get rid of ah i hate doing this there's 12 arcs in the YA and other sections that I'm gonna get rid of. One of them is Gifting by Leila Susan. And I must say as well, like a lot of these arcs were just sent to me from publishers randomly because I must be on some kind of lists. And so not all of them are ones that I'm interested in reading. They just send them. So don't think I'm just asking for things to get rid of. But this, I hadn't heard of it. I read the summary, didn't capture my interest. Don't wanna read it. <laughs> Wagenhurst by Michelle Paver. This one came out the month I started Booktube. That's how long I've had this arc and I've never wanted to really read it since. I mean, it does look good because it's like modern gothic. I've had it for like four, it's probably one of my oldest arcs ever. Probably one of the first arcs I ever got. I'm not gonna read it, am I? One of Us Is Next by Karen McManus. I wasn't the biggest fan of this book and I haven't been a fan of very many Karen McManus books. In all honesty, it's Karen M. McManus. And really I've just held on to this book even though I wasn't the biggest fan of it, just because of the novelty of having it, because it was an arc. It has, damn, this was so good on the side and I just disagree. I disagree so I don't want liars on my shelves. I'm gonna get rid of Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. This one I've had on my shelf since 2019 as well, wow. And YA Contemporary, again, it's just not really something I'm into. <laughs> this was also 2019, The Vanished Bride by Bella Ellis. I just have no interest, absolutely no interest whatsoever. And again, I keep hold of arcs because I think I can't get rid of them, but 
I would probably get rid of so much more, honestly. My DR is Darkest by Kayla Cottingham. I feel like this came out this year and it involves some kind of university setting. Just not interested, I'm afraid. The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. I have the final copy of it, so I don't need the arc, even though the arc is absolutely gorgeous and stunning. I do love arcs that go all out, but I still haven't even read it yet either. So. Aurora by David Coep. I think this was just sent to me because I want a list. It came out this year, apparently. It's a sci-fi. I don't often read sci-fis. They usually give me existential crises. The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. I have read this. I do have the final copy. I think I got it from Illuma Crate. And it was fine. It was absolutely fine. I haven't heard anything else since about this book. Like, has there been a sequel? I would have to reread the first one for me to read the sequel. But I just remember thinking the first one was just fine. Nothing amazing. The Lost Ones by Anita Frank. Another one I got in 2019. Haven't read. Don't think I ever will. Don't even have the final copy of it because I just didn't really care that much for it. Though it is very floppy. Oh, that is beautiful. I do love books or paperbacks like this. But unfortunately, I'm never going to read it. Never going to read it. Kingdom Tide by Ry Curtis. Another one that I really love the idea of because it's like some kind of plane crash and trying to find someone in the Alps or, or something like that. Again, I think this came out in 20, no, 2020. 5th of March 2020 apparently this came out. I'm just not going to read it. And the last YA in that log I'm getting rid of is Kingdom of Souls by Rena Barron. I have the final copy of it. I have read it. I liked it. I did like it. I would have to reread it before I read the sequel. I do not need the arc. Again, I was just keeping hold of it because of novelty. I like the way it looks with a snake, but I don't need it. So is that 19 books I need to unhaul now? I can't count. Well, I thought I was closer than I was. Okay, so middle grade arcs now, I guess. I have five middle grade arcs that I want to get rid of. Alex Neptune, Dragon Thief by David Owen. That went straight in the bin. Whatever just dropped out, just went straight in the bin. I have the final copy of this with the sprayed edge, so I don't need to keep that. Ghost Cloud by Michael Mann. Again, I own the final copy of this and I own the nice, beautiful hardback of it, so I don't need that. When I Say Blue by Lily Bailey. This is middle grade contemporary. Again, not really gravitating towards middle grade contemporary or contemporaries in general half the time, but I'm sure this will be important and amazing for a lot of people. Noah's Goal by Frank Cottrell Boyce. I did unhaul the final copy of it. I don't want the art copy either. And The Secret of Haven Point by Lisette Orton. I own the final copy of this too, so I don't need to keep the arc. Okay, this one might be controversial, <laughs> but I think I'm just gonna get rid of all of my Leigh Bardugo books. I read Shadow and Bone. I got halfway through Siege and Storm. Didn't care whatsoever. You know when you look at books on your shelves and you think, wow, these books actually date these shelves? Like, I've had these for quite some time, and when I look at them, it reminds me of a certain era. Like, this brings me back 10 years. This dates the shelves 10 years, you know? And I just think, I'm never gonna read them at this point. I really not. The time for them is over. It is over. Eight more books to go. 16 Horses by Greg Bushinen. I love the premise of this, the idea that there were 16 horse heads buried in all pointing a certain direction. And I heard from a lot of people that premise is fantastic, but it's like literally like the smallest fraction and the rest of the story is just not good. So I'm not even going to try it. This was another Wall of Stones thriller book of the month that I felt obligated to pick up. I'm going to get rid of Witch Stephen Gold by Shannon Small. This is my art copy of it. I do still have my fairy loot edition of it, which I will be keeping. But yeah, I'm just going to get rid of the art copy because I don't need it anymore. 70, we're on the home stretch now, lads. I think we're going to end with something that might be controversial. Again, it might get me in trouble. Like, I genuinely think this might get me in trouble. The uh, Spellslinger series by Sebastian de Castell. I had every good intention of reading this series two years ago. I read the first one, though it was fine. It was, it was absolutely fine. And I was going to read the rest of them. I genuinely was, I was going to do it. And every time I look at them, I'm like, I don't really fancy you right now. And that's been the same every single month for the past two years. I don't think I'm ever gonna to get to them. If I'm being realistic, I have no interest in reading them anymore. I really don't, I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry to everyone I'm hurting with this. It's not my thing anymore. It's just not my thing anymore. However, I still really do wanna read the Grey Court series by Sebastian de Castell, but the Spell Stinger series, it's just not my bag, baby. But that does bring me up to 76 right there in one fell swoop. There we go. That was 76 books unhauled. Now where the fuck am I gonna put them? <laughs> oh, I don't even have a box or anything to, to put these anywhere. I'm gonna have to like pile them up or something. Yeah, I do feel bad for a lot of these books that I'm unhauling, but at the same time, 
I'm really happy to have the extra space. I don't think I'm ever going to read these or want to reread the ones that I've read. So they're going. They are going, they're going, not quite gone, but they are going. But yeah, that was my 76 book unhaul. Please let me know in the comments if you think I should have kept any of them. If I made some decisions that you personally did not agree with, that's fine. Let me know everything down below. Let's talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, that was the unhaul video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. Chat to me about everything about this video. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my content. If you'd like to join my Patreon or follow me on any social media, then all the links are down in the description box. But I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.